Next on CTV Sports Night, we'll talk with longtime Minnesota coach and current Gopher radio broadcaster Glenn Sonmore. We'll also check in with Roseville girls hockey coach Rich Keeney and senior Rhonda Curtin after a Raider state championship. We'll bring in the sports guys, take your phone calls, trivia prizes, all that next. Now Babby, something is the center, drops the flip, the breakaway, drops all of them, going right to the goalie, shoots, he scores! There's a snap a bit low, but Guy held it, Well, hi, everybody, and welcome to the program, CTV Sports Night. We are live from our studios here at CTV in Roseville. Thanks for joining us. I'm your host, Dale Irving. We've got another great show ahead of you. Uh, later on, we'll have Rich Keeney and Rhonda Curtin from the Roseville Raider girls hockey team. We'll bring out the sports guys. But first, we want to welcome Glenn Sonmore to the program. Glenn, thanks for being here. Well, thank you, Dale. Nice to be here. When it comes to hockey, Glenn, you've done it all here <laughs> in Minnesota. You've been with the, the Gophers, the North Stars, the Fighting Saints, even the Moose. Uh, now you're... You haven't uh, missed any. You haven't missed any. We've got the Wild coming up. Any plans for the Wild? <laughs> well, who knows? Who knows? <laughs> They're still not here yet. Yeah. Uh, how about, uh, of course, today we, we know that you're uh, doing uh, analyst work for 1500 KSTP for the Gophers mm -hmm. on radio, and you're also doing some scouting, so you're keeping busy. Yeah, I am. I, I, I tell my friends I'm very fortunate. I reached retirement age, and I've never had a real job, and I've never faxed anything, so, uh, and I'm still holding to that. This isn't like a real job for me, Dale. I, you know, I, I would, I'd be going watching hockey games anyway if I, if I sure. hadn't been hired by Bobby Smith to do a little scouting for Phoenix. Do you uh, like being up in the press box rather than behind the bench? <laughs> well, no. <laughs> Is it easier? I, I, like, like, I think you'll find most athletes and players will say the most fun was playing and the next uh, most fun was coaching. And, and, but I've been very lucky, as I, you know, I say, to have been able to keep involved scouting. And, sure. and now I, I do enjoy doing the color commentary for the Gophers. Well, we'll, get, uh, we'll talk about the present-day Gophers in a little bit, but I want to touch on your career. You've had uh, quite a path to where you are. You've, like we've mentioned, you've done so much stuff. Uh, it all began, maybe people may not know, that you played some professional hockey, uh, minor league, and in the NHL for a couple of seasons with the uh, with the Rangers. Yeah. I was very fortunate, Dale. That my first minor league uh, assignment, I came here to play for the old uh, Minneapolis Millers. I hate to think about how long ago. It's going to be 50 <laughs> years ago very quickly, but 1950. Uh, and, and it was my great fortune to be on a team uh, still playing then, uh, John Mariucci, sure. the godfather of, of hockey. And that was the blessing for me. He, yeah. he not only kind of took me under his wing as a hockey player, but he took me down and jammed me in the university, made me go to school. I, Sure. Shouldn't say made me. Well, he kind of did. I was scared of John like everybody else. And right. So that was a great break for me, Dale. As a player, I think you've admitted maybe you weren't the best skater or no, scorer. You're, you're kind of an enforcer <laughs> out there, which is Well, that's really strange to, to think <laughs> about, you know, because I was, uh, you know, 180 pounds yeah. probably in 5'11 or something. And, and, and uh, when I lined up, and I was a left winger, I was usually bigger than the guy. Uh, across from me, and I think about that today. And, and I, you know, one of the things I did bring is I played hard, and and I, I, I couldn't skate very well. That's very true. I couldn't shoot at all. I could handle a puck, and I could fight. And um, <laughs> so that uh, they found uses for that. Sure. Now, of course, you know, you suffered a career-ending injury. I think you were 25, 26 mm -hmm. years old. Kind of. Tell us what happened there. Well, yeah, I, I was uh, 25, uh, just going to be 26 in a couple of months. I was playing for Cleveland in the American Hockey League. I had had, I had just been sent down a, a couple of months earlier from the Rangers. I had finished the year before with the Rangers, and I was playing with them earlier in the year, and they'd sent me back to Cleveland, the American League. And uh, I was uh, I was standing in front of the net trying to, uh, you know, deflect a look, and I watched the puck go back to the point, and I knew it was coming, and I was looking over my shoulder for it, and unfortunately it hit me right square in the eye, and and uh, in that you know that quick minute my my career was over, and and. Uh, 
once again, uh, my, my blessing of having uh, John Mariucci exactly. as, as not only a mentor, but a guardian angel, really. Uh, while I was in the hospital then, uh, Dale, uh, as soon as they'd let him, the call came through and John said, Glenn, don't, uh, you know, I have arranged for you to be the freshman coach here uh, next year so you can finish up your degree. I had been going every summer to school uh, here at the university, majoring in physical education. So. Uh, John did just what he said. He brought me back here, and I, I coached the freshman team. Interestingly, Herb Brooks was on that freshman oh, team. That That's right? when I met Herbie. And uh, that was my first look at uh, the Gopher hockey team, you know, uh, so... And that was a long time ago. Yeah, so as you mentioned, a career-ending injury and, and even a big change in your life. Mm -hmm. John was there to, to kind of pick yes, you up. Uh, tell me about John. What, what has he really meant to you? Well, like uh, I am one of his disciples. Uh, I, I'm, I, I kid my other buddies about it. Louis Nanny, Herb Brooks, uh, uh, Murray Williamson, uh, the late Bob Johnson. Uh, uh, but I was more like John in this respect. Uh, I, ne I didn't have the ability to hang on to any money. Those other guys have all made a lot of money. <laughs> one of the great John Mariucci story is he looked at those guys and said to me one day, look at, look at uh, Louie there and uh, look at Herbie and those guys are all my protégés. He said, look at how financially how well they're doing, John. And he shook his head and he said, you know, I should have listened to myself. He said, <laughs> But uh, we were all very fortunate in, in, in being uh, uh, in the shame. I always think now is that John had to leave us so early. He would have loved everything that's going on here. Uh, I know you're going to have uh, Rhonda Curtin and, and <coughs> Rich Keeney on later. He would have loved to see the emergence of, of uh, girls yeah. hockey at, to the level that it's come. And, and he, uh, we sometimes say every young, young uh, boy in the state that's uh, got a scholarship uh, through their hockey ability can say a little bit of thanks because none of it would have happened without John. Yeah, it was definitely, uh, yeah. definitely tremendous. Maybe it, is it possible to say that without meeting John, you may not have ended up in Minnesota all oh, these years? Well, absolutely not. I, yeah. I, would, I don't think I would have gone to school, uh, John. Uh, I, I wanted to go, but I, you know, I was kind of lukewarm on it. And, and at that time, I, I was uh, pitching uh, in a little league back in, in Canada. It was like a semi-pro league where the American college kids came up and played. Of interest there is uh, uh, Al Shaver was broadcasting those games because uh -huh. he, he told me later, that first time I saw you, Glenn, I was broadcasting a baseball game you were pitching. But I was going to go back there. And uh, in the summer, I, I think they gave us 75 bucks a week or so. That seemed like a lot of money then and a job supervising the playground or something. Sure. And, and that looked very attractive to me. But John... Uh, John was adamant that I should go to school, and and, uh, and and thank goodness I did because when when this injury came, I was only about two quarters away from graduation, and so I could go on and, and teach and coach, and uh, I don't know what I'd have done without that. Sure, talk about destiny. Of course, when John left uh, the Gophers in the mid '60s, you yeah. were there to, to he got take, me that job to take too. over. So John that was a big said, break. I'm leaving. I'm going with the National Hockey League team. Come on here, I've got you the job for the Gophers. So yeah, he did. And you saw some great players. Went to the yeah. uh, title game in '71. What are some mm -hmm. of the uh, the great memories of those years? Yeah, we had uh, some great players uh, back then. And, and uh, Dean Blaze, who was coaching uh, North Dakota now, Mike Antonovich, who was my I always get kidded. He was my favorite player yeah. of all time that ever played for me and among the pros or anyone else. And and uh, we had a Canadian goalie named Murray McLaughlin early, although he wasn't with us the year we went to the. But we had some great players, and we had so many. What's so nice, uh, Dale, to see is we had like. Uh, Ronnie Peltier and, and Dougie Peltier, whose boy is playing now, and Ronnie's so successful in business with Edina Realty. Uh, we had uh, uh, guys, uh, uh, we had a whole line early from uh, South St. Paul with, oh no, I'm sorry, I'd be. Uh, uh, St. Paul Johnson with the Krupe, Shattuck, and Hughes. And mm. in those days, uh, you know, we just had a whole lot of, of really outstanding kids right here from uh, Minnesota. And, and uh, uh, there wasn't any, we, we did have, I inherited a Canadian goalie, but once I got here, and he was miraculous, but once uh, I got here and started going out recruiting, uh, you know, the, the Minnesota kids were so dominant among mm -hmm. American hockey at that time, there really wasn't, uh, couldn't see much of a need to go anywhere else. I was going to ask you, of course, John, as you mentioned, was big on bringing in the Minnesota mm -hmm. kids, and of course now the tradition today is the same way yeah. where Doug Wood brings in yeah. only Minnesota kids. Was you, so you, your philosophy was pretty much to stay with Minnesota? and. <laughs> Do you think that should change today? Well, well Dale, it wasn't really. Uh, people are, are misled a little on this, that John didn't have anything against Canadians. He brought Louis Nanny, Murray Williamson, and a whole bunch. And we had, as I said, the Canadian, uh, some, some great Canadian players. What John was against, 
uh, was the Canadian kids coming when they were 22, 23 years mm -hmm. old. They'd, okay. at the, in those days, there was no restrictions to what junior league you could have played in or a senior league up there. So they'd come to Denver particularly, and they'd be 22, 23 years old when they'd get here. And, and John was adamant about that. And he absolutely, even though we were in the league, he wouldn't play Denver anyway. So what John was against was not uh, the Canadians, it was the people coming that were so much older and more mature than the Minnesota kids. And I think uh, what's happening is that, uh, and there's been more about it in the paper re uh, recently, Coach Woog is realizing that perhaps he's got to go and get some, uh, he's got to wait for a couple of junior kids rather than just uh, taking the, the best 18 year olds. As it was pointed out, I think, in an article yesterday or today in the paper, he has to make the decision on those kids at the end of their junior year in high yeah, school. It's, tough. it's very, very difficult. First of all, you're more apt to make mistakes. And second, when they come, there's a big difference between an 18-year-old boy and a 20-year-old boy to start his, his college career. And the 20-year-old and the juniors who've gone and played in that USHL league and bounced around on those buses for a couple of years, they're, mm -hmm. they're much more appreciative of what they're yeah. getting when they come here. So I think that that's what he's going to look at very hard. Mm -hmm. I don't know that he's going to go away from Minnesota kids. I think he's going to go away from just, just kids directly from high school. Of course, now we're seeing... Uh, college hockey in Minnesota grow with Mankato yeah. State joining yeah. and so the competition is just yeah. immense. And Doug Woog, you know I spent time, Doug Woog is just a very high class guy and an outstanding coach. I mean to, to look back at uh, his first 12 years, 11 of those 12 years he was first or second in the, uh, the toughest yeah. conference in the league but it's very very difficult now. There are more and more schools coming in there and the other thing is the, there's so, so much real good high-level hockey developing all, around, all across the country that Minnesota isn't the only place turning out really. I, I can remember getting back to John Mariucci. John used to kid when he was putting teams together in the 50s and even into the 60s. He'd be putting the the uh, national team or the Olympic team together, and he John loved to kid, and he'd be kidding with me. He'd say, "Glenn, you know what? I gotta I gotta put a couple of Eastern guys on these teams, or, or they get all over me because I he wanted to have them all from sure. never mind Minnesota. They'd all been from Eveleth if they let, but." He, and then he'd start saying, well, I can have the spare goalie, he can be on it, and maybe the sixth or seventh <laughs> the defenseman, trainer, yeah, and they, I can get a few of those guys. And that's how it was. And so what's made it so difficult for Doug is it's not like that anymore. And that's no knock on, on Minnesota hockey. That's just a tribute to the, to the way that, that hockey has blossomed right across the country. Rich Keeney and I were talking out in the hall there about, and, and the, the big thing in that might have been two things, I think. Bobby Orr is what happened. When Bobby Orr came, the, the Eastern kids got all so excited about hockey that now you had the best athletes in, in those high schools playing hockey in the, in the winter and not basketball. Hmm. I know when I came here to coach the university in 66, the first thing I did was check at the schools. I talked to the athletic director and I'd say, now what does the pitcher on your baseball team and the quarterback on your football team, what's he do in the winter? <laughs> and if he played basketball, and I forget about that school, I wasn't gonna get, if they said, oh, he's, uh, he plays hockey, I'd, yeah, they, they might come from there. Well, what happened is uh, the phenomenon of Bobby Orr in the late 60s, early 70s, started uh, everybody uh, playing hockey so much more, buildings were going up, and they call them Orr's buildings down there. Mm -hmm. And then right after that, uh, you know, uh, 10 years later or so, Herbie Brooks's Miracle on Ice, that put oh, the finish sure. to it. So now we just have the, the players coming, the best athletes are playing all over the country, and it, uh, the Minnesota kids don't dominate anymore. And that's just a fact of life. We haven't declined. Yeah. Everybody no, else is kind no, of caught we up. No, we, we, that's just there are so many yeah. more. That's all. Yeah. yeah. Well, I want to remind everybody that we are live uh, February 24th. So if you have a question for Glenn, you can give us a call at 651-481-9554. Uh, of course, Glenn, after the uh, Gopher years in the early 70s, you went on uh, with the Minnesota Fighting Saints, uh, general manager coach in there. Uh, some more great years, some great teams, a yeah. cast of characters, yeah. boy. That I was a lot you, of fun, yeah. Uh, I mean, I remember vaguely a few, uh, few yeah. of the years, but boy, some of the names yeah. back then with Shaky yeah. Walt and then Gord Gallant and yeah. the, the cast of characters. You know, uh, it's kind of interesting, Dale. We started out trying to have a whole lot of Minnesota kids right away, and we did. 
and we and we didn't do we did okay but not great and i remember kind of quizzing having my own kind of poll saying to the isn't it you think it's great we got half minnesota kids and some of the people here and we had some guys have been playing senior hockey around here and everything they were they told us in effect well you know if you guys were really any good you'd have a whole bunch more canadians i said oh so then we went and got uh, mike walton dave mm -hmm. keon yeah. dave keon's the greatest hockey player that's played for a minnesota i mean he's in the hall of fame sure. now yeah. even with all due respect to uh, Neil Broughton and Phil Housley, who are the you know the, the greatest Minnesota kids who have ever played. Dave Keon is unquestionably the greatest hockey player that ever played in mm -hmm. for a Minnesota team. We were able to get to him at the end of his career, and Johnny McKenzie from the old Bruins. Sure. And and then when we did that, we had a whole lot of excitement going on here, and we had a couple of tough guys, and Big Jack Carlson sure. and, oh, yeah. and Gordy fighter. Gallant. As you, yeah. Sure. I think Carlson was the best fighter Jack's I've ever seen, yeah. except for Mariucci himself. And, sure. and these people now, the, I'm the only guy old enough to have seen Mariucci uh, fight, and, and he he didn't fight very often, but boy, could he fight. But uh, yeah, as you said, Dale, that was a very entertaining team, and it you know we felt very badly that it it, it didn't work here. What, and, what was the problem with with the WHA in general? And, well, and it, it was you know let's face it, I we would never say it then, but we were not at a level sure. of the National Hockey League. We tried to pretend we were, but we weren't. Mm -hmm. And and uh, you know they just were going to eventually squeeze us out. Here we had the added uh, burden that we really didn't have financially the structure to to yeah. stay with some of the other teams and. We had a great following. I, uh, I had, you know, I look back on it now. There's a book that's come out of the history of the WHA, and it oh, lists really? in there all of all the uh, crowds each year in each place. And you know, we the, a couple of years there, we had some great crowds here, and and, and average well, not only to see the, the house with Houston. You know, we had 17,000 people in the building some nights, and. And, but we had good average uh, uh, attendance too. We just didn't have the financial stability at that time to, sure. to sustain what what had to be sustained. You still see a lot of the guys from the old Saints team. Yeah, we do. Still around. Uh, there, there are a lot of people. This is the, the testimony that this is a great part of the country to mm -hmm. live. They'll, more people come and stay here. You know, I don't want to knock. Uh, St. Louis or New Jersey or some of the places where people play, not nearly the number of people stay uh, for the Saints some, but more, you can see it more with over the 26 years of the North Stars were here, there's an sure. awful lot of players who stayed here. So we have had a good number of the Saints stay here. The WHA is going to have a big reunion in, in Boston uh, uh -huh. in June sometime, and I'm looking forward to going down to that. Of course, after that, uh, you spent a year with the, I think, the Bulls in WHA yeah. before moving on <laughs> to the North Stars. Uh, I think it's 78. That was right after the merger. Yeah. I think with the Barons, and, and that really kind of set the foundation yeah. for a great team in '81 with yeah. getting Bobby Smith and, yeah. and later Neil Broughton. Those yeah. must have been some fun years on yeah, the Yeah, there were. When I look back now, those were just uh, the great team. Were, yeah, we had uh, uh, Dino Cicerelli, oh, sure. Craig Hartsburg, who was. Uh, we had some of the guys that are now uh, Dirk Graham and, and and Craig were both here then, and and. Uh, but we had uh, Bobby Smith and, and uh, you know, uh, Al McAdam and uh, Jill Malash in goal, and Kurt Giles, who was just, uh, we, we had an awful lot of awfully fine players, and we had some great role players that we, even when I look back now, I realize that we didn't appreciate enough, probably. I'm talking about guys mm -hmm. like Mike Polich and Tommy Younghands, who sure. uh, we were always thinking, well, we could maybe improve the team if we got some guys that they were the best penalty killers in the league, we thought, well, if maybe if we get some guys that not only can kill penalties, but they can maybe contribute on a fourth line, and that didn't turn out to be a good decision because the guys that you got to replace them, they weren't content to play on the fourth line oh, anymore. Yeah. But uh, just in looking back, uh, the contribution those guys made to the, to those teams, and and but that was a fun time. Yeah. Uh, I'll never forget the uh, the ovations when we came back, uh, Dale. The year that was. The 81, we went to the finals. That would be the highlight, of course. But mm -hmm. the year before, we we beat the Montreal Canadiens, yeah. uh, uh, who had won four straight Stanley Cups. And in doing the remarkable thing in that it wasn't that we beat them because they were starting to they had some injuries and Lafleur or uh, Dryden had retired, but. The amazing thing was we won three games in Montreal, and that we, we opened the series by beating them twice right in Montreal, mm. and that's what I was referring to. When we came back here to play that, uh, the third game of that series, 
against the Canadians. I'll never forget that as long as I live. We were sitting down, we're, you know, the dressing room's down there, and we got to uh -huh. walk up, up to the ice. And we couldn't hear, they, there was so much noise on there before we came up to start the game that you couldn't hear yourself uh, in, the, in the dressing room. It, just, uh, it was just amazing. What was the funnest arena to, to play in with, with the whole ambiance and the crowd and everything? I, I think the Chicago Stadium probably for us because the, the immense rivalry we had. Mm. People here will remember oh, the yeah. Dino, Dino sucks and Secord sucks. So, yeah. uh, that's the first time I heard that. And kind Savard. Of, and yeah, oh, yeah, and Savard. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and that stadium. It was just a bedlam in there too. Mm -hmm. Although for for me, a Canadian kid, the the one that ha held the greatest for me is the one they just uh, said farewell yeah, to a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I was lucky enough to be able to get back and watch the final ceremony there. But the Maple Leaf Gardens. Uh, mm -hmm. Those of us that are old time hockey uh, people, I hate to see all the buildings are gone yeah, now. The me. Boston Garden, uh, the Chicago Stadium, the you know the Olympia in Detroit when they had it, the old Maple Leaf. Yeah. I played as a player in the old Maple Leaf Gardens, or uh, excuse me, the old New York Madison Square Gardens way back in the 50s. And uh, there's two buildings have gone since then there. But those buildings in the, the Montreal Forum that uh, in Canada those are like uh, uh, shrines they call the Canadian fans in Toronto call uh, the Maple Leaf Gardens the Church of Hockey and, and <laughs> it is, it's on the corner of Church and Carlton Street too but uh, there's just a, almost a reverence about those places for the Canadian It's people. the end of an era in mm -hmm. hockey. It is. Yeah. Let's talk quickly about the Gopher Hockey team uh, today now it's been a tough couple of years yeah, for the team. Yes. Um, what what can they do, or what, what do they need to do to turn things around? Well, they you know they they have had a couple of uh, things happened. Uh, what a couple of things happened that really had this thing uh, made their planning not work out as well as it had. Nobody uh, Crowley left a year early, yeah. and Rasmussen left a couple of years early, and then uh, it hasn't been ballyhooed much. But uh, I, I think the Climber kid not coming back for he mm -hmm. would have come back for three more years. And, and uh, they, they've really uh, had a tough time back at defense where they had guys like Crowley and Treble. And, and I think we forget how good Brian LaFleur uh, was, was back there. Ryan LaFleur, uh, Brian LaFleur was back there. I notice he's just tearing it up in one of those uh, minor league things. And so they got caught short there. And, and uh, then, you know, they've just had, uh, uh, they got a little unfortunate that the uh, Eric Day, who was going to be kind of mm. take over perhaps as the goalie and allow them to ease Adam Hauser in uh, yeah. early, easily, uh, he, he came up with an ailment that's kept him out. And the combination of those things and, and, uh, uh, and just some people who aren't having the kind of years they thought they'd have and, and, and the league getting stronger and stronger. Oh, man, and and it's... Uh, and, and it got uh, last year. Uh, they had so many injuries that that it was you know you, you could see it happening. And this year they haven't had the injury thing, uh, but uh, they've just never seemed to be able to get it going. Uh, I'm hopeful yet that they've got you know they've got two weekend series going here. If they can play really well in those. Uh, up in Duluth this weekend and back home against Wisconsin, they can uh, solidify a home ice uh, advantage for the playoffs and maybe do something there. But it's been a very, very rocky time for them, and uh, they just got to battle their way through it. Right. How about your uh, pick to win it all, North Dakota? Are they yeah, just too tough to beat? Yeah, they, they, they just amaze me. Uh, I, I thought they showed a little... You know, uh, we had a couple of weekends where they weren't nearly as dominant against us as, say, Colorado College was. You remember the one weekend here, Colorado just beat us 7-1 and 6-1, and they, mm -hmm. I thought, my goodness, uh, Colorado's the team. that. But since then, I, I've gained a new <laughs> respect for North Dakota. Every time you think they're in trouble, they, uh, they just blow everybody away. And so they certainly are the, the number one team that, that I've seen. And uh, the amazing thing is, They've done it with just a, a core of little wee, uh, uh, you know, little five foot eight, five foot nine, five foot seven forwards, but they're all very powerful, uh, strong, and very skilled uh, little guys. And they, you know, they almost without exception, they had a couple of years of junior before they came here, and they're they're just uh, taking charge of things, and everything's going right for them now, and they're playing with all kinds of confidence and getting great goalkeeping. They've got two goalies again that are playing yeah. really well, so they look uh, as close to invincible in this league as you can look. 
Well, it'll be interesting to see how uh, how it all ends up. Glenn, it's been a pleasure to have you well, on. Thank uh, you we very appreciate much, you coming uh, down. Right. There's never enough time. Uh, we'll <laughs> oh, have to have you. you come back again well, and talk yeah, some more hockey. Yeah, it's, it's, it's been a pleasure. It's my pleasure to be on. Thank you. Of course, we'll listen to you on 1500 KSDP Gopher Radio Broadcasts. Uh, Glenn Sonmore.